Today, I'm going to walk you through how you can enable your organization-wide data consumers to come and find the right data for their use case using data products, and how can they understand and manage that data better using the Enterprise Glossary. Then I'm going to walk you through how you can help federate data governance and build that collaboration between your data owners and your business experts using governance domains and the other concepts that help to build out the data catalog. And lastly, we're going to talk about how your central data team can use standard controls to ensure that you're always getting the most out of your data. Here on the overview page, I'm going to start off with a simple prompt with our copilot that helps users to understand how they can practice data governance. Here we can see that the copilot was responded with the steps that I should go take to start to build out the data catalog and how it'll help me to understand the data governance practice that I'm working to implement. And it'll give me some links on how to get started and get deeper into purview. We also have some click through tutorials here on the home page that will take users into a deep click through exploration and demo of each step that it takes to accomplish your data for data governance objectives, along with links to documents that help them to understand the product and the practice even deeper. Now, as we talk about how can you enable your organization wide users to come and discover and use data more effectively, here we're going to be looking at our data product search page where users can see the different governance domains that are already publishing data, what they may have already accessed before, what they have access to today. And starting with a natural language search, they can look for new data. So here I'm going to look for some emissions data created by AI. And I'm not really looking for data that was created by AI, but actually the emissions here that were created by AI. So now what we're going to see here as a user is a short list of intentionally curated and offered data products that help make the discovery process much simpler and cleaner for me to know what is available for me to actually come and find the data that's most useful for me. Here, I'm going to look at the first uh, data product in the list, talking about the corporate emissions report for better understanding the impacts of AI on our sustainability goals, where I can better learn about the different assets that help to make up this data product, where I get the actual report itself and the visualizations that give me the insights that I'm looking for, and the underlying data assets coming from Snowflake, Azure Databricks, and our Fabric implementation to say, what exactly it is that I need to better understand to make sure I can go improve my AI. Now, here a user can go even deeper into each of the assets and better understand what is the specific information I'm going to get from this? What does the data quality look like for this specific asset? Or what is the data lineage that I'm going to be using when I look at this data and where is the data going to? Now, as I come back into that data product, also see that I have links out to other glossary terms, critical data elements, and the contacts that can help support my use of this data. Once I'm comfortable that I know this is the data I want, I can click access, request access and get a, a standard form and request process that I can go through and just fill out why I need this data and make sure that I'm always filling in the exact same form and the exact same process to go get access to data. So now I'm going through and applying the attestations that show that I will follow the appropriate policies and expectations even after I get access to this data and make sure that I'm always using this data responsibly. So once I click send, this will send a notification now to my manager and the stewards to go approve this access request and show that I've gotten data through the correct approval process. Now, as I'm looking to just better understand the data and what's available for me to come and consume, I can come into the enterprise glossary and I can look at the different glossary terms and I can look at this as a tree view so that way I can see how are all these different terms organized and what does it all mean together. So if I'm looking to understand a broad topic like carbon emissions and some of the details that it means to my company, I can look at a specific glossary term, what its description is, its acronyms, its parent terms, and then I can look at the other related terms and the data products that help to make up this data product or this, this glossary term. 
And then I can also use observability to better understand where is this glossary term already applied? What domains have information about carbon emissions? And perhaps I'm looking for something specific from one domain or the all up company report that I just requested access to. Now, as I come back into the enterprise glossary, I can, now I can look at the critical data elements that really make up the most important pieces of data that I wanna track and see where they exist across my entire data state and make sure that these logical columns always have a consistent understanding and the appropriate controls applied. I can do the same here with OKRs so I can understand the business value of my data and what specific value am I getting from any one particular piece of data. So I can look at my OKR, where we're at in terms of achieving my OKR, and I can go find the data that's most relevant to achieving this objective and making sure that we're uh, achieving our, our business goals, building that direct connection between data and the business value that it creates. Now, when we talk about how does all of this come together, we move into governance domains. And governance domains are how you can start to federate governance and empower your data owners and experts to come in and build out that meaningful information for your data catalog. So you can have your essential team build out your governance domains and apply the appropriate accountable owners. And those owners can specify who are the data experts that can come be data product owners, or who are the business experts that should be data stewards and can come help share knowledge about how this business area works. Then this will be building out those core data products that we just looked at available for consumers. We'll be specifying those glossary terms and how teams should understand and apply policies to data across their data state using the appropriate context of that data. We'll be able to look at the OKRs and those business objectives and how it relates directly back to our data. And we can build out critical data elements that represent those logical, most important data columns, like our emissions factors here, where we wanna ensure that everybody always understands what an emission factor is and where that data is stored today across our different data state. So whether the data is coming from Google BigQuery or Databricks or a data lake, we can make sure that we always have an inter a consistent understanding of our data and how it should be used. From here, we can start to apply policies where we talk about active metadata, meaning that all of the different concepts that we talked about, our glossary terms, our governance domains, and our critical data elements can apply these policies and ensure that they're trickling down to the data based off of the context of the data itself. So everywhere where this emissions factor has been mapped to will automatically get this manager approval required applied. Similar to our policies, we're also able to apply data quality at this logical level and ensure that we're always improving data quality wherever our data exists. So now I can build data quality rules, such as the data must always be a specific text field or it must always be populated and ensure that I'm always applying data quality against this logical element so I don't have to go to every asset and apply these data quality rules specifically. As we come into the governance domain, again, you can look at the data products that make up that domain and how the different dashboards, master and reference data, or ML models can be crafted to help govern the most important pieces of your data estate. So if we look at an ML model data product, we can see the specifics that make up that ML model and which specific training data assets might be used to help train the actual model itself. And we can look at what are, again, the glossary terms that help others to understand and use this data more effectively. Here, when we click on manage policies, the user will also be able to come in and specify how should a user go about getting access to this data. And they can validate what are those inherited policies that come from my active metadata and see where do I have things coming from governance domains, glossary terms, or critical data elements. Once everything has been configured and set up, the steward can publish this to make sure that now it is ready for others to come and consume and the end consumers aren't overwhelmed by seeing so many different technical data assets that all needed special cura curation just to make sure that they were actually understandable. 
So now as we build out our different governance domains and understand what we need to make discoverable, we want to make sure that we're always doing so with great data quality. So when we come into data quality, which is a part of purview, right away out of the box, we'll be able to see what are the specific data quality scores for my different domains. And I can look into how I get data quality on my different data products and come into every individual data asset and better understand what is the quality of each of my assets. So here, when we're looking at a specific data asset, I can come and look at the profile of that data, and I can review the detailed information that makes up that data column and see where could I go implement data quality to better improve my data. When I'm building out rules, I can apply simple rules like empty blank field checks or other things like uh, data type matches or table lookups. So data can always be referencing the appropriate values or make sure that it's always populated as I expect it to be populated. And I can build other custom rules here to help show other expressions that are more meaningful to the business specifically. So here I have a rule to say that anytime my emissions falls between 10 and 400, something is not right. I need it to go back and evaluate where did something go wrong and make sure that I'm always getting the right data to feed my central reporting. Once all of the data quality information has been built out here, you can run data quality scans or you can come in and build out scheduled scans and alerts. And you can run data quality directly on your fabric fabric data, you can run it on Snowflake, Databricks, Google BigQuery, ADLS Gen 2, and more. So anywhere where your data exists, you can start to run data quality directly on those sources and start to share that information with your data consumers. Now we talk about how do we monitor all of this and make sure it's always coming together and providing the most value for our end users. We can have controls, and this is where you can set up standard out-of-the-box controls that will make sure that users are always going to be getting the most out of their data. And you can tune these to your specific, specific expectations as a company. So I'm going to look at data product usability here, where I can see the trend and the over, uh, you know, overall progress that we've been making on this specific control. Or I can come in and I can edit this. As a data health owner, I can specify who is the specific owner of this one standard or which domain should this standard be applied to. And then I can also configure the thresholds to say what is healthy, what is fair, what is not healthy. And I can tweak the different target scores based off of the priority of this standard to my organization. When we talk about how we calculate the score of each standard, this is where we enable you to customize these controls to your specific definitions. Using no code rules, anybody can come in and build out their specific expectations for what good looks like in your data catalog. And this way you can make sure everybody always knows what it takes to practice data governance in a standardized way. And the best part about these rules is each one of these rules creates an action every time there's a failure to ensure that the appropriate accountable person knows what is it they need to go do to get to green and make sure that they're always good in these controls. So when we come into the actions here, you'll be able to see the, the actions that are assigned just to me for my specific sustainability domain. What are the things that I need to go do to make sure that my data is always getting up to standard and how I can build more trust with my data consumers? As we pull all of that information together and we want to drive a consistent rhythm of data governance and make sure that everybody is always understanding what good looks like, we have our out-of-the-box scorecards that give you a single data governance score. So that way I know what is the one thing that I can pay attention to and make sure that I'm always improving and moving in the right direction. And we'll give you the heat map and different trends to help understand where is it that I can go prioritize further improvement or make changes to my governance process as I'm looking to continually improve? Now, the, there are out-of-box reports, and we'll be giving the ability to create custom reports with a BYOC that enables you to bring your own compute and build your own custom reports from all of this metadata. Now, when we talk about 
all this metadata coming together, this is where we have our Lineage Explorer. And this is like your data lighthouse that helps you to see everything that exists in your data state and how is it all tied together. So I can look at my individual domains, the data products within those domains, and the assets within each of these domains. And then I can better understand how is my data progressing towards my expectations. And as I want to come in and learn more, I can come in and create a customized view where I can search for specific data assets. Now here we're gonna look at the custom profile, customer profile with the diagram. And now we can see how my data assets are spread across with their lineage. And I can look at things like data quality for each of my individual assets and understand better how does the data quality upstream of a source impact my downstream system and where are things that I could potentially go improve and monitor for my overall data state. 